What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg with a look at the new Google Nexus 7 tablet from ASUS. This is running Android 4.1 or Jelly Bean and is the reference design for the latest and greatest Android software. So this is the pure Android experience. So let's unbox this thing, take a look around the hardware and see what's new with the new software. Now the Nexus 7 tablet is available in two sizes, 8 gig and 16 gig. 8 gig 199, 16 gig 249. So that's pretty low. Now this is not available in a cellular version, so you can't get 4G or 3G. This is just a Wi-Fi device. Take a look around the box. You have that 7 formed by the shape of the Nexus 7 itself. Nexus 7 on the side, on the back. You see made for Google Play, full-fledged Android tablet. So this is the pure Android experience. You can see some of the apps they're highlighting in there, including the fact that this is the first Android device to ship with Chrome by default. So Chrome is the default browser. It's come out of beta and is now the preferred browser on the Nexus 7. Now in terms of specs, we have a 1.3 gigahertz quad-core Tegra 3 processor with a 12-core GPU. We also have one gig of internal RAM. This does not have a built-in SD card slot, so you either get 8 gig or 16 gig, so decide when you buy. Now this also includes NFC technology as well as an accelerometer, GPS magnetometer, gyroscope. This also has a 7 inch screen with a resolution of 1280 by 800, that's an HD display, uh, and gives you a PPI of 216, so it's not quite retina display. So let's go ahead and crack this open. So we got two pieces of tape here, so it's so nice they taped it twice. Pop it open. And there it is. We have a little tab here to lift it up. Let's we'll set that aside for just a moment. Take a look to see what's inside this package here. So we get another box. So we, here we have some literature here, a quick start guide and our warranty information. Let's briefly look at that quick start guide, see if there's anything interesting there. And it doesn't really look like it. So we'll set that aside. Inside here we have our micro USB charging and syncing cable. And on the other side, we can find our wall adapter here. You can see it's ASUS branded, and you can see the uh, USB plugs in there. Now onto the tablet itself. So we got a little tab here to lift up this envelope and slide it out. Or it's a little sticky here. There we go. Now taking a close look around the hardware, you can see on the back we have our Nexus branding. On the bottom we have ASUS's branding, as well as a speaker grill. This is a single speaker, not a stereo speaker. On the side we'll find our button, so we have our sleep-wake power button, as well as our volume rocker. Down here we'll find our headphone jack, as well as a micro USB connector for charging and adding data. On the side we'll find our uh, Four pins, these are electrical connections for connecting accessories. We also have two microphones, one here, another one up here. And that's so if you're handling this in either portrait or landscape mode, you may be covering at least one of the microphones. So at least one is free at any given time. Now the back is not removable. It's actually made out of this sort of rubbery texture. So it actually feels very nice to handle, very grippable. If you look very closely, it actually has these kind of perforations, which actually remind me of maybe a golf ball or the perforations on a leather seat. Now the edge is made out of this hard plastic bezel, so this is not metal or anything like that, it's just a uh, painted uh, silver uh, plastic. Up front we have an edge-to-edge -edge glass panel which is Corning Gorilla Glass. Up here we'll find our only camera on this device which is a 1.2 megapixel camera along with an ambient light sensor just next to that. Now the camera actually does not have a dedicated app so you can't use this as a still shooter. Basically it's there to be used with apps such as Skype. Now you'll find no other buttons here so no backlit Android buttons instead they appear on the screen itself. Now my next step is to boot up and set it up for the first time. So I'm just going to hold the power button. Okay, all right, so we have our welcome screen and we can select our language. It knows I'm in the United States, so let's click play. We're going to select my Wi-Fi, so that's my time capsule. I just need to enter in my password. Hi, Detroit Borg. Enter your password for mikeukelka at gmail.com. So now it's signing into my Google account, so it should be able to transfer all my account information, such as calendaring, address book, bookmarks, that sort of thing. So now it's going to ask me if I want to back up and restore from my existing Google account. For now, I don't want to do that. I want to show you the stock interface. And yes, I would like to use Google Location Services. Just a sec. Setup is complete. And let's move on. Now once you've activated your Nexus 7, 
Google will deposit $25 in your Google Play account. So you can start spending it on apps, books, movies, music, magazines, and everything else available in the Play Store. Now taking a look through the software, starting with the lock screen. On the lock screen, you can swipe this icon left, right, or down to unlock the device, or you can swipe up to get right to Google Search. What's the weather like in San Francisco? It's 69 degrees and clear in San Francisco. Here's the forecast for the next few days. Okay, so we get that new enhanced voice search as well as Google Now. So if we go back here, we can take a look at Google Now. Google Now is essentially an aggregator of information uh, based on your search history, location, account information. Uh, so you'll see information up here in these cards, and it's sort of intuitive. It knows what information you may need. So for example, if you show up at a movie theater and you've done a search for recent listings of The Dark Knight, it will show you moving listings and give you the option to purchase tickets, that sort of thing. Now once you get back to the home screen, you can get to Google now just by tapping and holding and swiping up on the home button it takes you right to where you last left off and you can do searches like how old is President Barack Obama Barack Obama is 50 years old how tall is Mount Everest Mount Everest is 29,029 feet tall play artist Coldplay playing request who directed Fargo? Fargo was directed by Ethan Cohen and others. So you can see you can do quite a few things with the new Google search and the voice sounds very natural. Now the Nexus 7 tablet comes with five home screens which you can customize by adding additional apps or widgets. Now the main home screen has the My Library widget which is an a widget that shows you all of your library information, such as your books, your music, your movies, magazines, and all you have to do is tap on any one of them to get right to them. So for example, that's my Coldplay album, and all of this is recent activity. So anything that you've looked at recently will appear in this library widget. We also have some Play Store recommendation widgets up here on, well, to the right of that home screen. And you can remove these if you want just by tapping and holding them and taking them up to delete. We'll leave them for now. Now down below in the dock we can find some of our standard Google apps as well. So we have a folder full of apps including Google Chrome which is the new default browser as well as Maps, Google Plus, Gmail, YouTube, Earth, Talk, Currents which is updated with Android 4.1, People, Gallery and Calendar. All of these will have been uh, transferred from your Google account. All of your information will have automatically been transferred to those uh, apps. We also have our Google Play Bookstore or our Google Play Library, so here, a Google Books Library, which is where we can find all of our books. So if you purchase books through Google Play, you can see them, or they will automatically download here, and you can read them right away. Obviously, this is one of the main use cases for this seven inch tablet is for reading. So of course, they've also given us a manual for the new tablet. So instead of having a printed manual, you get a full electronic manual. We also have Google Magazine, which launched with Android 4.1 as well. So if you subscribe to magazines, they will appear in this app, and you can tap on them and start reading them. We also have Google Movies, and they've included a copy of Transformer Dark of the Moon. So this will automatically load uh, as soon as you boot up your device for the first time. To this so-called alien civil war? Well, the other side wanted to... We also have Google Play Music, uh, which is where you can access your uh, music library either from the cloud or locally. So, for example, we have our Coldplay album here. So click play, and we're all good to go. And lastly, we have our Google Play Store for buying apps, music, movies, and everything you can think of right from one location. Now, down below, we also have our three main Android buttons, including back, home, and recent apps. So if we tap recent apps you can see everything we last launched and uh, we can swipe them out of the way if we want to close them or tap them to bring them forward. And we also have Google search which is always omnipresent on any home screen. So we can do search right from here. Where is the nearest Ford dealership? Getting directions. Now at the top of the screen we'll find our clock battery indicator as well as Wi-Fi status and we have our badges, our notification badges. So we can see that we have uh, music playing in the background. We also have some new email notifications. Now if you had Instagram, Facebook, Google Plus, you'd see all of that appear as badges up here. And you can swipe down to get to them. So you can see all of our notifications including a little widget here to play our music and we have our email notifications here. Now you can expand this just by bringing two fingers and swiping down. And you can jump right to that app just by tapping on it. 
Now the drop down menu also has a screen lock rotation toggle here. So if you don't want the screen to automatically reposition from portrait to landscape mode. So for example, if you're reading a book and you don't want it to go to landscape mode when you lie on your side, that's one way of quickly locking the rotation. You also have quick access to your settings. If you drop down down here, you can also see you can clear out all of your notifications. Now in order to see all of our apps, all we have to do is tap the app drawer and we can see all of them. Now you can see the standard suite of Google apps, many of which are already on the home screens. Some of them that are not on the home screens include uh, Google Wallet, which is part of the NFC technology built into the back of this device. So uh, NFC works with uh, proximity. So if you have an NFC payment device or another device that uses NFC to transfer information, basically you bring them close to this area and it transfers the information uh, securely. So that's great for payment. Uh, now in terms of of other apps we also have currents which is sort of a news aggregator this uh, allows you to subscribe to certain websites uh, so you can receive their information in sort of a tablet or a mobile device friendly format so for example if we go to the verge here you can see it's formatted for this display so you can see text fills the screen images fill the screen and you don't need to pinch and zoom to read it now to add additional apps, all you have to do is tap and hold on them and bring them to any of the home screens and drop them. Now one of the great things about Android 4.1 is things will now get out of the way if you want to drop them on your home screen. They used to, used to have to move them around in order for them to fit on. Now you can also drag and drop them up to remove to delete them. This also works with widgets. So for example, we can drop our, uh, let's see, calendaring widget here. We can drop it right here. And you can see it resizes to fit uh, between these two widgets. Now you can also resize them by tapping and holding them and dragging them around. And if you don't want them, just tap and hold them and take them up to remove. Now the other big change with Android 4.1 is under the hood, which is called Project Butter, which is designed essentially to speed up the perceptual performance of Android 4.1. So you get higher frame rates, uh, so transitions are much smoother. Uh, touch events are much more accurate, so you get better touch screen sensitivity. Basically, the whole system uh, now prioritizes or better prioritizes rendering of images on the screen. So definitely it feels a lot quicker and a lot smoother. Now, one of the interesting things here is that uh, the home screens do not have landscape mode. So you can't rotate this into landscape mode, uh, but certain apps certainly do work in landscape mode, obviously, such as the movie app. And you can see that the icons will reposition themselves to the corresponding location. Now, Project Butter also shows itself when you're rotating the device around. So you can see the transitions from landscape to portrait mode are pretty smooth and pretty quick. Now, like the iPad, the Nexus 7 also has a magnet which interacts with smart covers. So I have a magnet here which we can test out. So if you wave in the right spot, you can see it turns it off or wakes it up. This is a really strong magnet, so I don't even have to touch the device for it to work. But you get the idea. There are third-party cases out there right now which you can purchase on Amazon uh, which work with that feature, and I will have one for review in the future video. Android 4.1 also brings predictive text, so it's able to predict what the next word might be. So for example, if I were to type it was, it predicted that a dark and stormy night. So it's able to predict some text so you spend less time poking away at the keyboard. Android 4.1 also has offline voice to text dictation. I've turned off my Wi-Fi and you can go ahead and speak. It was a dark and stormy night, period. Now just to give you some perspective on the size of the Nexus 7 versus the iPad. Obviously the iPad is a near 10 inch device so it's quite a bit larger than the 7 inch uh, tablet. So the 7 inch tablet is ideal for portability. Uh, certainly better than an iPad in terms of uh, carrying this around. You can actually fit this in a pocket if you have a really large pocket or inside a coat pocket. This is better suited for reading books because it's lighter weight and can be held in one hand pretty comfortably. Now in terms of battery performance, this does have a 4,325 milliamp battery which is good for about 9 hours of video playback or 10 hours of web browsing or 10 hours of e-reading or 300 hours on standby. Now in conclusion, I'm very impressed by the Nexus 7 tablet, especially at $199. You get some impressive internal specs and a nice sharp high quality screen. Now combine that with the smoothness of Android 4.1 and killer features from Google such as Google Now and the new and improved voice search and you have the best 7 inch tablet money can buy right now. So that's going to do for me guys in this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next one.